Hey everyone, it's Brittany here, or hey, it's Brittany on YouTube, and today I'm going to do a video on the tease test. This is probably going to be a long video, so I'm going to give you the facts at the beginning, and then I'll go into detail towards the end of the video, so if it is long, you haven't missed a whole lot. Basically, let me give you a rundown. My name is Brittany, I'm 25 years old, I've been an LPN for about three years, and I'm in an RN program now in my second semester. I took the TEAS exam January 2017. I scored an 86% and it was my first and only try. Um, pretty much I was aiming to score between a 79 and 100%. Yes, girl, I was I was really aiming high, honey. Um, and mostly because the program that I'm in is very competitive and the average TEAS score was a 74%. And because that was such a high, I guess a high TEAS score, it would really bring up your points um, for getting into the program. So basically the way that the program goes is your GPA is averaged in with your T's to, on a point scale and they use those points to get you into the, to the program. So you may have a 4.0 but if you bond the T's you are just like me honey. Um, so I have like a 3.3 so I was really really aiming high so I would not have to take the test again or be afraid that I wouldn't get in. So I got in because I'm in my second semester clearly. Um, for the T's, I will go break down my scores. Basically, you have four sections. You have a reading section, a math section, a science section, and an English language in that order. So you bust out the test. The first section is reading. Then it goes to math. Then it goes to science and English language. I scored an 87.2% on reading, a 93.8% on math, a 72.3% on, on science, and a hundred percent on English language. Yes, yes, I'll pop my own collar. I don't gotta pop, I'll pop my own collar. Okay, anyway. So that was my official tease. For my practice tests, I did take both ATI practice tests. You can find those on the ATI website for $46 each, worth every penny, worth their weight in gold, because it is exactly like the tease test. It is exactly like the tease test like listen to me let me grab you let me pull you to me it is exactly like the tease okay so the style of the questions are exactly the same except for the science section the science section is a bit random compared to it's only random because anatomy and physiology is so broad and basically it's like a free-for-all because the, there's so many systems in the body you can get thrown with at you know anything can get thrown at you however endocrine was a very important part of the test endocrine very important so for the practice test a i took them both twice you get two chances to take them i took them both twice and my highest score for the tests for the practice test was 87.3 on practice a practice test a and on practice b was 85.3 and I ended up getting an 86% on the real thing. So my second try was closer to my actual T's average than my first try. My first try was like a 77 on the A and then a 73 on the B. Practice test B to me was harder, a little bit more difficult. Um, but by getting into it and taking them four times, I've taken them four times, um, the practices, it, I was able to be a lot more calm and I was able to know what to expect on the actual T's test and really get into what it is that they were wanting um, us to answer and how they wanted us to answer the questions. So, um, with that being said, the tools I used to study were the ATIT's manual, the official manual, which is this one here, not the one with the red, the one with the gray, this is the revised version. And I also used the yellow Mometrics manual, which I don't have with me because I had lent it out to a friend. I don't know when I'm getting that back, but I used that. And pretty much for the Mometrics manual, I just used that for science because science was my most difficult subject. Um, for reading and language and math, this pretty much was good enough for me. So a lot of people are upset that they couldn't just go buy this, read it, and then score 100 on the T's test. If it was that easy then they wouldn't be requiring this to get into nursing school. Let me just be straight up with you guys. If it was as easy as going and buying this book, reading this book, and getting 100 on the T's test, then there would be no competition to get into nursing school. This is a guide. This guide will give you every topic, every topic that you need to know for the T's. It 
also makes it very clear that you may have to study other things okay however the outlines in the beginning of the book and the beginning of the chapters give you all the topics that you need to know for each section okay this is the first page of the reading so it gives you all the topics you need to know once you read through this and read through the different topics and figure out what it is that you're lacking that's when you're able to go in and focus study. So this was my foundation. I read this cover to cover and then I went in and focus studied using the Mometrics manual and using Crash Course Online and using different online resources. So you really want to read this, figure it out what it is that you are lacking. Do not underestimate this test. Please, like do yourself a favor. Granted, if you're watching this, I need you to know what score you need to get on this test. For me, I needed to score as high as possible because I needed that. I needed this tease to pull up um, what I was lacking in my GPA. If you just need a 60, then you might just need to go take it tomorrow and not even worry about it. If you need like an 80 or higher, then you need to really take this seriously. So for this, you have the reading, which is, let me go through. The reading is 53 questions. 47 of those questions are scored and six of those questions are not scored. You have 64 minutes. For the reading section, I was only able to read the, sec the, um, the passages one time. On the practice test, the, practices, the passages were smaller. On the real test, they are long. You do not have time to go reading it three and four times. You don't. So what you need to do is go look at the questions first and then have those questions in the back of your mind and then read the passage. When you're reading the passage, think about the questions as you're reading so you know what you're looking for. Do not add information to the passages. If it's not in the passage, whether it's common knowledge or not, do not add information to the passages because that's where they will get to trick you. That's how they trick you. Um, granted, on the English, I got an 87.2. I was hoping to get, I'm, I'm on the reading, I got an 87.2. I was hoping to get something higher, but I got tricked. So. 87 I'll take it so don't add anything to the passages when you read if it doesn't say Billy went to the to the stream to collect rocks don't assume that Billy went to the stream to collect rocks even though streams have rocks you see what I'm saying so don't add your common knowledge if it's not on the passage it doesn't exist um there will be answers or yeah there will be answer choices that will be in there that are common knowledge to trick you um for me in the reading section I used a calculator yes honey Use the calculator, cover your answers, read the question, and think of the first thing that comes to mind, and then go through your answers. Don't look at your answers first. Not in the reading section. Don't look at your answers first. So for the entire test, I used the calculator to cover my answers. That is the hugest tip I could give you guys. Take the calculator, drag it over your answers for each question, then read the questions. So you have 64 minutes. You probably won't get to read it um, more than one time. You can go back and scan different sections to give you better clarification, but don't expect to get to read the passage three and four times. And don't pick through the passage either, because in order to find the main idea for certain passages, you're not going to be able to just skim it. And you're not going to be able to just go to the question and go jumping back and forth. You have to read it all the way through. So that's the um, reading section. The practice test for the reading section was very helpful um, um, for the ATI uh, practice test online it was very helpful for the math section I scored a 93.8 which blew my mind I am NOT a math person if they did not have a calculator on that test I don't know what I would have done however what I did like I said I went and I read this book cover to cover I went through every single um, fraction and, and equation and proportions and I made sure I knew the proper way to work those problems so when we did the problems on the practice test I was able to see those style problems those style problems mix mix equations and um, creating a word problem you know what I'm saying so finding those types of problems because they're the exact same type of problem and making sure I knew it through and through now if I had to take it today I would probably fail but making sure that you know the style of questions and making sure that you know exactly how to work it don't assume you know how to convert fractions okay don't assume make sure you learn it relearn it okay 
The math section, you have 54 minutes, you have 36 questions, 32 are scored, 4 are not scored. And um, for that, I did... Uh, I did okay on the practices. I got a 93 and I got a 90, 93 and 85 on my practice test for the math section, which was surprising to me. Biggest thing for math, cover your answers again. And if you are at a complete loss, work the problems backwards. So work from the answers and plug it into the, um, the questions to work through the problems. That is my favorite thing to do for math because you can... It's almost, it's impossible to get the questions wrong if you plug it back in. If you plug the answers in and it doesn't work, then it's wrong. You see what I'm saying? So you're able to do process of elimination. That's another thing for reading and math. Process of elimination. Hugest tip in the entire universe. Um, once you eliminate the that fourth choice, you're down to three. So when you can get it down to two questions, to two answers, you cut your um, test taking time in half. Okay. So that's the math section. The science section was my worst section. However, your girl ain't stupid. Um, before taking the T's, I actually clept out of biology because I hate biology. So I took a clep test. I got a 52%. And there go my three biology points on my college transfer. So I already took A&P 1. I got an, a B and A&P 1. I got an A&P a &P 2. And in taking those classes, I was able to really focus in on my weaknesses for the science section of the T's. The science section is 63 minutes. I probably took it in like 15 minutes um, because I don't like, you know, taking too much time on those kind of questions. If it pops in my head instantly, I'm like, all right, that's it. And I'm, I'm clicking just for science stuff. 47 questions, well, 53 questions, 47 are scored, 6 are unscored. For the science section, the biggest section for this, it's all a &P. It's all anatomy and physiology. Um, yeah, there's human anatomy. There's... There's 32 questions on human anatomy, and then eight on life sciences, seven on scientific reasoning. So if you're gonna spend time on anything, it needs to be on the systems of the body. And that's another thing that's in this book. It gives you the breakdown of what um, the amount of questions on each section. Um, so 32 questions are anatomy and physiology. People got on that test and were like, oh my God, it's all anatomy. Yeah, they have a book that says it right here. That's what I'm saying, get the book. Um, so the science section I got a 72.3 um <laughs> most of it was endocrine uh, a lot of it was the cardiovascular system a lot of it was the um uh, endocrine cardiovascular GI GU everything else was just kind of I don't even remember half of the other stuff um but most of endocrine cardiovascular GIGU and then um, a little bit of genes in there a little bit of macro a little bit of atomic uh, um, atomic structure in there but most of it was a &P, like the book says 32 questions um, so that was the science and then the English language is 28 questions I got a hundred percent on the English language okay I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a grammar Nazi, so it was not a big deal, but I did, like I said in the beginning, I read it like I had never taken an English class in my entire life. So going through um, standards of English, and these are pretty much evenly um, distributed. So standard English, knowledge of language, vocab acquisition. So spelling, learning how, you know, where your colon and your semicolon go, subject verb agreement, that's kind of what's in this section. 28 questions, 24 of the questions are scored, Four of them are unscored now let me break this down for you you have four sections okay the um, percentages that you get in those four sections are averaged so even though you have 28 questions in the language and you have where's the, t the highest amount of questions and you have 53 questions in reading that language percentage and that reading percentage are the same weight okay that is why I say you really have to go hard in the sections that you're good in because those weights they, they balance out. There's, four, there's only four sections. So even though one section takes a longer time or one section takes you know less time, it's the same weight because those averages in those sections are averaged together, uh, regardless of how many questions are in them. So if you spent all day on the reading section, you got an 80% in the reading section, and you spent two seconds on the language section, you got an 80%, those 80s both are the same. They're the exact same. Um, the same weight. So that is 
pretty much the rundown of the actual test. Tips, okay? Like I said, use your calculator to cover your answers. Process of elimination. If you eliminate your answers, you get a, a higher chance of guessing the right answer, especially for the science section. If you eliminate the wrong answers, you're able to narrow it down a lot quicker and you're able to really focus in, especially for science and reading. You're able to focus in on the two answers that are possibly right, okay? Do not take your, you have a long time for certain sections. However, for the reading section, it's easy to run out of time. For the math section, you may have a little bit more time to go back and plug in the answers to make sure that it's right, to check your answers, okay? Um, and then, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, leave them down below, hit me up on Instagram, and also, um, I have an article on allnurses.com that I'll link below as well with extra information. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you guys do great and get into nursing school and become amazing nurses, okay? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys.